Hello, my Bill for Thousand Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. We are back with another Coffee House Crime. That's right. This one is titled Murderous King of the Insuls, The Delusional Case of Elliot Rogers. All right. I'm excited to get into today's story. It was actually suggested to me by a viewer, and you guys have never failed me. I usually come out of this wishing you would have at least once because I usually end up crying into my pillow. But it's okay. We'll get through it together. Let's go ahead and get into this story. Go ahead. Turn them lights down low. Put on something comfy cup with someone special. It's a murder sensel. That's the ones that don't get the booty, right? Let's get Curious. Let's get curious. I, I feel like being curious today. Yeah. Let's go to plan. He would leave behind grieving families and a long digital trail of clues to his destruction. My name is Adrian and welcome back to Coffee House Crime. Today we're looking at the case of Elliot Roger, who is also known as the Killer Virgin, King of the Incels, or as he likes to call himself, the Supreme Gentleman. It's been a long time that I've wanted to cover this case. In this video today, we'll be looking at Elliot's history, tying his video logs to his stories, and looking at what eventually led him down his darkest path. I do also have a small announcement to share with you all at the end of this video, but first, I have a story to tell. So without further ado, pull up a seat, grab a coffee and sit back. This is the case of Elliot Roger. The story of Elliot Roger first begins east of the Atlantic Ocean in London, England. Elliot was born on the 24th of July 1991. His father, Peter Roger, was a British filmmaker and photographer, and his mother, Lee Chin, was a nurse who worked on film sets. It's through their encounters at work that the two first found love before conceiving Elliot two years later. His parents also had a daughter, Elliot's younger sister was called Georgia. When Elliot was the age of five, the family moved to Los Angeles, California in 1996, and this was a move to strengthen his father's career in filmmaking. After settling into their new home, Elliot was enrolled into Topanga Elementary School. By all standards, he was a well-behaved kid, even making a few friends in his first year. His childhood seemingly bright and positive. But it was just after his seventh birthday that his first struggle in life appeared. Yeah, here we go. Now's when the shit starts. Hell yeah. I was wondering. I was wondering. I was like, yeah, it's sound, you know, not like too overly sweet, but it's definitely, you know, cutesy. I was just wondering when the shit was about to hit the fan. Yeah. But this is just that little shit, you know. It ain't the shit that like hits the fan and then smashes off the walls and shit. It's just that little shit. His mother and father would unfortunately divorce, and this would leave both him and Georgia to split their two Christmases. time between the two on weekdays and weekends. Elliot was already described as a shy and quiet person. He was happy, but didn't have much confidence, and he would always try to fit in with the cool kids. A sudden change in his home life, though, would propel his insecurities. Two months after his seventh birthday, his father Peter would introduce Elliot to a new woman, and her name was Sumaya Akabun. She moved into Elliot's father's household shortly after, and before he knew it, Elliot realised that she was now his new stepmother. Oh shit! The two would argue often, and with Elliot not accepting any discipline from an outsider, this would be a recurring problem in the years to come. Elliot lived a relatively wealthy life growing up. He went on several holidays abroad, had access to general and mental health care, and pretty much got whatever he wanted. But despite the money and gadgets that Elliot owned, his friendship circle slowly dwindled into his teenage years, and he eventually found himself becoming the target of frequent bullying. He still had friends, but not many. The situation would grow more complicated. I mean, he just looks kind of like a dorky loner. I mean, what's there to pick on? Let him be him, fuck. Poor thing. Did at home too. Damn it, I don't want to feel bad for him. He's a murderer. Adrian. You're an asshole sometimes, but I don't want to feel bad for the bad guy. At the age of 13, Elliot's father and stepmother had a son. 
Elliot's new stepbrother was called Jazz. In his mid-teens, he started a personal YouTube account called Elliot's Blog, which is where he often complained about his loneliness and reminisced about his childhood. Elliot Roger here. And here I am at Serrania Park. <sighs> the most significant place of my childhood. It was around this time that Elliot began his path of depression and loneliness. Unfortunately, the bullying at school didn't stop for Elliot either. Even at one point, the teasing resulting in Elliot having his head taped to the desk by fellow classmates. It was through negative what? encounters like this that caused. What? I'm not laughing because it's. That's fucked up. Children do not do that at home. I'm laughing because what teachers was there when this happened? Was was there no parental guidance whenever this child was getting his head taped to a desk? And my other question is that really made me laugh is if you know what was the teacher's expression when she walked into the room if she wasn't there when it was happening? What was the look on her face when she walked in there and seen it? I just caused Elliot to move from school to school quite often. And, with that, he never made any friends locally. Elliot also started to see a psychiatrist at the age of 16. He was prescribed Risperidone, an antipsychotic used to treat schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. He openly admitted in his blogs, though, that he refused to take this medication. After turning 18, Elliot became increasingly isolated. By now, he only had a handful of online friends. He often told his parents that he was unable to make friends in real life, and no girls ever seemed interested in talking to him. Elliot decided that he wanted to improve his life moving forward, and to do this he would try two things. The first one was to learn how to drive, thinking that this would impress women, and the no second way. would be to try and dress better, therefore making him seem more approachable. He desperately wanted to fit into the world and make friends, so along with his new car, he changed his hairstyle and brought a bunch of new clothes. It was noted by his classmates, however, that although he did buy a new car and new clothes, he never actually tried to speak to anyone or make any friends. Instead, he would sit in his car on lunch breaks, and expect others to make the first move. His evenings and weekends still continued to be spent alone at home as well. He would spend his time either- He was just a little backwards, man! The... I don't enjoy feeling bad for the murderer. But I kinda do. Playing World of Warcraft or Halo with his three friends James, Philip, and Addison. And more or less, at the age of 18, Elliot recognised that he had spent most of his latter teenage years angry at the world. Upset that he didn't fit in with friendship groups, despite never trying to. And even more importantly to him, he started to become enraged that he had never slept with or even had a girlfriend for that matter. Elliot's perspective on other people had shifted to become more toxic too. He openly admitted in his journal that whenever he saw a couple together, holding hands or kissing, he would feel either intense sadness or rage. At one point, this resorted in Elliot throwing hot coffee over a couple that he saw kissing in a Starbucks car park. And while that action seemed hostile and completely out of order, it was only going to get worse. In the year of 2011, Elliot was 19, and on Saturday the 4th of June, he moved to Isla Vista a community on the coast of Santa Barbara, California. He moved there to attend Santa Barbara City College, joining a private residence with two other men. It was almost instantaneous that Elliot's bitterness and loneliness extended into his new life though. Yeah. Within a week he was frustrated with his housemates, and by the end of the month, they had moved out. The situation with Elliot's next pair of housemates though was even worse, and coupled with Elliot's racism, he would argue with the two daily almost getting into physical fights on a couple occasions. The longing for a girlfriend continued too. He would often get- So he's a racist virgin? Oh, now I do feel bad for him. Get so angry at seeing couples that it would become a normality for him to run back to his room, sulking and crying. His life continued to worsen in 2012 too. It was this year that he dropped out of all of his classes altogether, not being able to stand the sight of others falling in love. Elliot also spiralled into the trap of gambling with lottery tickets. He believed that getting rich by winning the lottery would give him all of the female attention that he desired, 
And so, in the first week of February 2012, he spent over $100 on lottery tickets. Not surprisingly, he didn't win. The next week though, he felt more confident, and so he spent $500 on lottery tickets. No dice, but maybe third time's the charm. Week three, he spent $700. This too though, ended in a loss. He had nothing to show for the $1,300 he spent gambling. And even worse, he didn't accept defeat. He felt like he deserved it, that he was cheated away from his money. Elliot dipped into one of the worst bouts of depression in his life shortly after this. As spring break fled up near La Vista, he spent most of his time in his room, refusing to try and socialise. Angry, sad, and alone. And for the times that he did leave his house, he'd walk by himself, ranting to his video camera about his life. Hey, Elliot Roger here. Right now I'm just taking a walk through the park in this really nice secluded area. And I'm just contemplating about my life and how unfair it's been lately. Ever since I started desiring girls, but they never desired me back. Life has been a living hell since then. Right now it's spring break. Everyone else my age is out having fun with their friends and their girlfriends. Here I am, taking lonely walks through a park. Get your dough! In April 2012, Elliot's long time. Man, you could took that $1,300 you spent on lottery tickets and bought you something. And keep your company, like, get a dog. Get you a flashlight and a dog. An expensive dog and a flashlight. I'm just saying. Stop bitching. When life gives you no poon, you find poon. You make poon, you buy poon. Lemonade, people. Um, childhood friend James also decided that enough was enough. He found Elliot too radical, too negative, and so with that said and done, he called the friendship off. It was at this point that Elliot now considered himself entirely alone, friendless in this cold world. Late one September night, Elliot drank an entire bottle of wine, or at least he tried to. He ended up spilling an entire glass all over his laptop, completely destroying it. This meant that the next day he had to go to Best Buy to buy himself a brand new one. While he was there, he had to wait a few hours for the store to prepare his order, and so during that time, he walked across the road to a local firing range. This would be a turning moment for Elliot. He had previous thoughts of acting out the Day of Retribution, a time where Elliot would claim vengeance against women for denying him of his sex life, and it was here in this firing range after he I mean, <clears throat> I'm not going to say that it's easy to get poon, but I don't think you can sit back and blame the women for that, but I think you're just a little on the weird side. Maybe you just need to find you a woman that's a little on the weird side. Maybe you're, you two can get together and have a weird little weird baby. He took his first few shots that he asked himself, What am I doing here? How could things have led to this? While his internal question at first sounded hesitant, by the end of the day, he had made his mind up. He had come to the conclusion that humans are just brutal animals, and if he cannot thrive among them, he would have to destroy them all. In his manifesto after this day, he wrote, Me manifesto? I didn't want things to turn out this way. Me manifesto? I didn't want things to turn out this way. I wanted a happy, healthy life of love and sex. But if I'm unable to have such a life- Don't we all, bud? I mean, whenever I was growing up, I didn't want to be cops and robbers, cowboys and Indians. I want to be the poon master. Yeah. Then I will have no choice but to exact revenge on the society that denied it to me. Elliot purchased a Glock 34 automatic pistol in December that year, and again during the following spring break he purchased another firearm, a Sig Sauer P226. On the 20th of July 2013, Elliot attended a party where he again tried to interact with girls. He'd been working out in his bedroom for the previous two weeks, and he thought that this would increase his chances. 
but again it ended in him being ignored. In his drunk state, he sat on a ten-foot ledge where other members of the party were hanging out. This escalated into an argument, where he then tried to push girls off that very same ledge. He failed, and instead he was pushed off the ledge by the men who had intervened. This resulted in Elliot being beaten up, and eventually he would need surgery to repair his broken left leg. Wow. This, according to Elliot in his manifesto, is what actually made him start meticulously planning his day of retribution. But with a broken leg and some preparations to make, it, took it would take some time. Fast forward, and it is now the early months of 2014. You gotta heal before you can kill, bruh. What the fuck? Whoa. So, he walks into a party, stands in a corner, and gets drunk, expecting people to come up and just throw their vaginas at his face? And then gets angry, so decides to throw the vaginas off of a balcony, and then... What the fuck? This dude's stupid. Teen. In those early months, which would be the final months before the planned attack, Elliot spent most of his days outside of his room. He went on hikes in the mountains of Montecito, took long strolls along the beach, wandered to the parks around Santa Barbara, and watched the sunset in many car parks as he contemplated his own existence. Hey, Elliot Roger here. I'm just sitting in my car right now, after watching that beautiful sunset descend beyond that hill up there enjoying a nice vanilla latte I've been doing a lot of thinking about how sad and unfair my life has been all because girls haven't been attracted to me I've had to rot in bleak and sad loneliness I mean, you give a chance to all these stupid, obnoxious guys that I see, that I see you walking with, but you don't give a chance to me. Why not? I'm, I'm such a magnificent guy. I'm beautiful. You can't deny that. I'm civilized, intelligent, sophisticated. I have a sense of style. And yet you girls don't see it. It's, it's not fair. I deserve them more. I don't understand you girls. It's like your sexual attraction is flawed. It's perverted. This world. You ever think maybe they're not attracted to you because you're acting like a real little bitch right now? I, 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 okay, I just don't know too many ladies that are like, Hmm, I want me a little bitch of a man, let me tell you. You ever think it might be something to do with that, bud? I mean, I guess you're pretty. I guess you got style. You like to touch your hair. I, I, I got you. But you ever think maybe you're just a little bitch? And... Sorry. Most ladies don't want to be with a little bitch of a man. Just go out and act like a dude, not someone who's like a little bitch. I'm not saying go out and like punch another dude in the face or nothing, but just, you know, don't act like a little bitch. It's so twisted. But anyway. Well, let me tell you. That's gotten every man some poon. Walking to the club, stand in the corner, and just look sophisticated while drinking a Mai Tai. That gets them all running up to you, bud. Let me tell you. No, you got a peacock, bro. You gotta get out there. Puff them flumes, man. You... Like that. You know what I mean? He went, he would see couples together, and this outraged Elliot. During this time, he would record himself in and around his car. He would upload these videos to YouTube, but no one would pay attention to them. Hey, Elliot Roger here. I'm just sitting in my car right now, enjoying the view of the beach. And my view has been ruined by this sight right here. 
In front of me, sitting right there on that bench, is a young couple. I was enjoying such a nice view until they came and sat down and started kissing. This is the reason why life isn't fair. Why can't I experience something like that? I have to show everyone why I hate the world. Because no girl would do this with me. I hate them. I hate them so much. It's not fair. Me? Life. Get them claws, kitty. See what I mean? You're acting like a real little bitch. Like, I'm sorry. Ladies out there, show of hands. How many of y'all think that's attractive in any way, shape, or form? I'll wait. No hands. Imagine that. Is not fair. Bye, fame, fair, Only bro. one week had passed since that video had been uploaded to YouTube when police came knocking on Elliot's door. Someone had watched the video and they were suspicious that Elliot was unstable. They called a health agency, which in response called the police, and they in response went to him. Police interrogated Elliot outside of his bedroom door, questioning him on if he had any suicidal thoughts. He played the situation down though and said that he was doing just fine. It was a very close call, because if police did go into Elliot's bedroom, they not only would have found his pistols and a plethora of ammunition, but they would have also found his manifesto too. Me manifesto! Unfortunately though, they never entered Elliot's bedroom. Damn. Elliot's radicalised thoughts were at this stage solidified, and the severity of his emotions were only getting worse. Hey, Elliot Roger here. I'm up in the hills in Montecito right now. It's truly a beautiful day. But, as I've always said, a beautiful environment is the darkest hell if you have to experience it all alone. And sadly, I've been alone for a very long time. And my problem is girls. I don't know why you girls are so repulsed by me. I dress nice. I'm sophisticated. I'm magnificent. I have a nice car. A BMW. The fact that you're calling yourself sophisticated and magnificent. I mean... I'm sorry, dude. Like, if I had a vagina, you would never see it. Like, just looking at your little bitch-ass self is just like, my vagina's dried up and I don't even have one. I'm just saying. I'm polite. I'm the ultimate gentleman. Look at how fabulous I look. And yet, you girls, you never give me a chance. And that's just such an injustice because I'm... So magnificent. I deserve girls much more than all those slobs I see at my college who are somehow able to walk around with beautiful girls. I mean, look at me. I'm gorgeous. But you girls don't see it. I should be the one with the girls. But you never give me a chance. It's such an injustice. I don't know why you girls hate me so much. I've always wished I could ask you this, and this is my way of asking you this. This is the only way I can ask you. Because you don't actually go up to no one and talk to them, because you real little bitch. That's my thing for this whole video is, that guy is a real little bitch. Elliot's plans for the Day of Retribution were complicated and violent. The day was actually spread across too. He planned to first drive to his father's house where he would kill his stepmother and his younger brother, Jazz. Oh, yeah. He was always course. frustrated with Samaya, and so for him, it would be sweet revenge. And as for Jazz, he didn't want his younger brother surpassing him as a man, so he too had to go. He would only do this if his father was out of town for the week, though. He didn't want to harm Peter. Next, he would drive back to Ila Vista with the family SUV, 
and take the lives of his housemates so he could use the apartment as a place to lure strangers in before beating and killing them. George Chen and Chang Yuan Hong were currently living with Roger in their shared school apartment. He would then on day two target the Alpha Phi sorority, a sorority he deemed as the most beautiful dorm on campus, filled with hot blonde girls. After he was done with them, he would then switch to his SUV and head over to Del Playa, before running over as many victims as possible, and then turning the gun on himself. Elliot Roger saw himself as a god, deserving of much more than he had on planet Earth. In the final pages of his manifesto, he wrote, I am Elliot Roger, magnificent, glorious, supreme, eminent, divine. I am the closest thing there is to a living god. Humanity is a disgusting, depraved, and evil species. It is my purpose to punish them all. I will purify the world of everything that is wrong with it. On the day of retribution, I will truly be a powerful god, punishing everyone I deem to be impure and depraved." His preparations for the day of retribution wouldn't quite go to plan though. What? His plans for day one to execute his stepbrother and stepmother would require his father to be out of town, and while he originally did have plans to do so, that was cancelled last minute. The consequence to this is that Peter actually and unknowingly saved his wife's and his son's lives just by being home. As a result, Elliot ditched his plans for the SUV too. His BMW would have to do, but before he could execute the rest of his plans, he would have to make and upload one final video to YouTube. Hi, Elliot Roger here. Well, this is my last video. It all has to come to this. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. The day in which I will have my revenge against humanity. Against all of you. I'm 22 years old, and I'm still a virgin. And it has been very torturous. It's not fair. You girls have never been attracted to me. I don't know why you girls aren't attracted to me but I will punish you all for it. What is the answer to this? Because he's a real little... I don't know what you don't see in me. I'm the perfect guy. And yet you throw yourselves at all these obnoxious men. Instead of me, the supreme gentleman. I will punish all of you for it. You will finally see that I am, in truth, the superior one, the true alpha male. <laughs> yes. Well, now I will be a god compared to you. You will all be animals. You denied me a happy life. And in turn, I will deny all of you life. It's only fair. I hate all of you. <laughs> I've waited a long time for this. I can't wait to give you exactly what you deserve. Utter annihilation. <laughs> what the fuck kind of shit is that? Oh. <laughs> He sounds like the most generic evil villain on any movie ever. Oh my god. Think of your worst horror scary villain movie and th did he not just sound like that? You will bow in my power of the real little bitchiness. I am going to sit here and stand in the corner, pet my kitty, and expect you to come to me. Look at my kitty. Do you not know who this kitty is? It is God. You will respect kitty. Dude's a fucked up individual. Like he needs, he needs a, he needs a cat. He does. He needs a cat. On the twenty third of May two thousand and fourteen, Elliot began his rampage. He started by stabbing his two housemates, George Chen and Chang Yang Hong, to did death. Did he live? Oh no. Their they friend Wei Han Wang was visiting. Did he live? Then to death. Oh, no. You shouldn't took a pause between stabbing them and the to death part. At the time, and he too was killed. 
Kulpa. The three men receiving 142 stab wounds between each other. At 9.17pm, Elliot then uploaded his final video to YouTube, titling it, Elliot Rogers Rap. I mean, that's nearly 50 times a piece. That's fucking... My heart would have been tired after the first one. Retribution. One minute later, he then sent his 137-page manifesto to 34 people. This included both of his parents, other family members, his therapist, his former school teachers, and his childhood friends. His therapist contacted his mother within five minutes of the email being sent, and very quickly she reacted by calling his father Peter, and then the police. Both Peter and Lee Chin raced from their homes in Los Angeles towards Isla Vista, but by then, it was too late. Elliot was already in motion. He headed to the Alpha Phi sorority with the intention of shooting everyone inside, but when his knocking on their front door went unanswered, he retreated back from the property towards the street. Instead, Elliot shot three Delta 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 sorority women who were nearby, killing Cooper and Veronica Weiss, and wounding Bianca de Kock. He then drove further into town yeah. to Pardal Road, before he proceeded on foot and fired several rounds into Ila Vista Deli Mart, killing a student named Christopher Michael Martinez. After killing Christopher, Elliot drove away and continued his rampage, shooting at several pedestrians and drive-by shootings while striking others with his BMW. As he backed onto himself, Elliot got into a gunfight with three responding officers near Little Acorn Park. He suffered a gunshot wound to the left hip before speeding away. He was closely pursued as he fled, Still adamant to cause as much carnage as possible, he crashed into a cyclist. In his rage though, he crashed his BMW, and- 20 points! And there was no way to flee. Elliot then fatally shot himself in the head, finally bringing an end to his rampage. Wow. Can't even face Police officers would find Elliot Rogers dead, but- that's fucked up. Couldn't even face the consequences because he's such a little bitch. Behind his steering wheel only seconds later, and with the cyclist next to him, they would think that both at first were suspects. Both of them would be handcuffed, but a few minutes later, the cyclist would be cleared of any suspicion. Police would soon discover three bodies that night, and then another three the next morning. Christopher Martinez, a graduating student at UCSB, was pronounced dead in the Ila Vista Deli. He was described as a really great kid that had a bright future ahead. Katie Cooper and Veronica Weiss were both killed outside Alpha Phi Sorority House. Veronica was a sweet and friendly young woman who loved sports as much as she did her friends. Katie Cooper was known as an unforgettable smart girl. She was studying art history and archaeology. The following morning, police would find the bodies of Wei Han Wang, Cheng Yuan Hong, and George Chen at 6598 Savile Road, number 7. Wei Han Wang was academically gifted in computer programming, and he was looking forward to visiting Yellowstone National Park for his 21st birthday. Mm. Cheng Yuan Hong was both smart and kind, known to be always willing to help people out. And George Chen too was sweet-natured a volunteer at an elderly neighbours organisation when he wasn't seeing friends or tutoring other classmates. On the day after the spree, a candlelit memorial was held in honour of the victims. This was followed by a memorial service at UCSB's Harder Stadium, which held over 20,000 people in attendance. Wow. Elliot Rogers' father Peter would then go on to state television to share with the world his anger, despair and confliction. He would then go on to admit that, sometimes, due to the pain Elliot caused, that he wished his son had never been born. Despite the widespread damnation to his actions, Elliot Roger would soon become known as the King of the Incels, a portmanteau of involuntary celibate. Incels are an online subculture of people who define themselves as unable to find a romantic or sexual partner despite desiring one. It is there that Elliot found sympathy and forgiveness for his struggles to both romantically and socially find his place on this earth. But Elliot is better defined as a misogynist, a racist, and a narcissist. I mean, sometimes it just takes time, you know? Rome wasn't built in a day, them panties ain't gonna drop in a day either, bruh. Calm her down. Shit. He had a strong prejudice against women, clearly spoke against Asian and black people, 
and described himself to be a god above the rest of mankind. But there were other factors at play here too. He was a man severely struggling with mental illness, something that he had been struggling with for a very long time. And he was also very lonely, not just seeking relationships, but friendship too. With a split family and moving around so often, it's easy to see- There's millions of people out there every day that have loneliness. You tell me this little motherfucker couldn't get the fuck over? Wait a minute? Buy a hooker? that both his chances to find companionship and overcome his mental obstacles were thwarted. It's thought of Oking to wonder if this massacre could have been avoided entirely if he had received the correct response in his earlier years. Probably. That does not diminish his actions though. What he did is unforgivable. But it does underpin the severe consequences in not addressing mental hardships early on in childhood. And the real tragedy here, the lives of six others lost all who had no play or part to Elliot's suffering or rage. Elliot's 137 page manifesto is available online by the way, it's kind of made this case pretty easy to research. I'll leave the link if you are interested in it below, but a word of warning, it's pretty exhausting to read. Thank you again for watching another case by Coffeehouse Crime, and as- I wanna read it. No, I don't. I, the whole time I was gonna be like, man, he's a real little bitch. Oh, I really enjoyed that story. Thank you so much for the suggestion. Like, damn, I like it. All right. If y'all enjoyed this story as much as I did, or if y'all even enjoyed me calling that dude a little bitch the whole video, not Adrian, but the insul dude, Elliot. Think about subscribing. I don't even know where I was like that. <laughs> Hold on. Let me start over. I really enjoyed that video. If y'all enjoyed that video as much as I did, or if you even enjoyed me calling that little dude a little bitch the whole time, think about subscribing. That's what I do. Not always, but when it's called for, that's what I do. If you're a fan of the spooky, scary, strange, strange things that just make you go, that yeah, he's a little bitch, then by all means. And if you enjoyed today's video as much as I did, please go down there and hit the thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. Sorry, my brain's a little bit of everywhere. It happens. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Ah, find the words to go out on. Elliot Rogers was a real little bitch.